Hello everybody, my name is Palm and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. So today uh, I thought we'd watch, since it's the new year, I thought we'd watch the top 10 most anticipated new anime of this coming year. Um, I know there's a bunch of new stuff like this are coming for 2022. I know the Panini like kind of halted everything and stopped the process of a lot of new anime that's supposed to come out like last year. But I think this new year is coming with a vengeance and there's a bunch of new stuff that's coming out this year. And I'm super excited to watch it, but there's so much stuff that I don't even know what's actually coming out. So, um, I just finished, I just finished recording a video for my 100 subscribers special video. I just want to say thank you guys so much for 100 subscribers. I really appreciate it. We're at triple digits. It's crazy, crazy, crazy over 100 subscribers. And it may not be a lot for some of you, but it's a lot for me. And I really appreciate every single one of you for watching my video. And, um, for what, yeah, just for watching and, uh, viewer attention has, like, been really good. So I really appreciate you guys sticking along with me and watching, and I'm really excited. So, um, <clears throat> for this new year, so, for this new year, I thought we'd check out all the new anime that's coming out that's not mainstream anime, because, uh, I think this anime is not really mainstream anime, but, like, um, just new anime that's people probably have never heard of that's coming out i know i probably never heard of it either um i like to watch anime that's um i like to watch mainstream anime but i also like to watch newer other new anime as well too whatever's coming out this season in this season i usually watch so anyways um let's let's just do it without further ado let's get into this video my interests are always so bad Don't blink, but we're now just a few crawls away from 2022. Want to like to give a recap of 2021 like we always do on the channel. I think that for today, it's better to take a look at what we have in store for 2022. Yes, it's our pre-year preview right here. Yeah, we all know you're all expecting Attack on Titan or something like that. So how about having a caveat of only focusing on new series? That way I can give some possible hidden gems their much needed I'm shine after that. realizing that my previous videos yes. on anticipated anime ended up being heavy on sequels. So what do you say about that then? It's the top 10 most anticipated anime this 2022 but before we proceed let's thank today's sponsors wait speaking of uh, sponsors this isn't sponsored but i have a sticker shop um it's on etsy link in down below where i sell my stickers of art that i create so if you want to check that out link in the description down below check it out next the past and March. the future Eminence and Shadow. Chunibyo, 8th grader syndrome. Those words quickly conjure up images in your mind. Perhaps of a time past that you feel shame looking back at. Perhaps of that one classmate of yours that you just don't get. Perhaps you're all just like Sid Gargano once, drowning in imaginations and dreaming of being the mastermind behind heroes and villains. Reborn as a noble in a world of magic after a mandatory visit from Drakun, Sid seeks to put his dreams to the test. Having dames and recruiting members to his organization Shadow Garden, he looks to take down his imagined cult of Diabolos and their goal of resurrecting an ancient evil. Unfortunately, the cult of Diabolos is realer than Sid would have ever thought. Now, here's an isekai that I didn't feature before. The Eminence in Shadow looks to be an interesting interesting tale that looks to combine some elements of the faction building formula and good old over the top Chunibyo. It may seem a little bit whack at first, but I think that it could end up being a sleeper hit of the season thanks to its very charismatic lead. I'll be honest with you, when he was like talking about the um, he was going through the synopsis, I, I could not understand what, what he was saying. It just sounded like a bunch of words. I feel like he started off in the middle of a paragraph and just kept going. Like, like no offense, to, no offense to this guy or anything like that. But I just, I, no, all, all I heard was words. Summer time render. Don't let the cover art <clears throat> fool you on this one. I, I myself got tricked shows. into thinking this is one of those coming of age dramas, and I couldn't be more wrong. So, what is summertime render then? What if I told you it's a shonen jump trick. series that's quite darker than the usual shonen fare and plays around with the idea of time loops? Are you surprised? I mean, I sure was. Shinpei Ajiro doesn't have what I'd call really an extraordinary pretty. life. 
Things change when one of the Gofune sisters he used to live with, Ushio, dies in a supposed drowning. However, upon seeing the bruises on the body of the sister, as well as getting a vision from Ushio herself, he knows that something was amiss. Shifting shadows creep along the island, and it would take a monumental strength to save everyone. With Mio and others, Shinfei looks to find a future where his friends and family survive. A tall task, I'd say, with the happy ending seemingly slipping further and further away against an enemy smarter than it seems. If you're into mystery thrillers that soon end up giving you a lot of fighting in action, you should add this to your plan to watch list. With its emphasis on time loops and such, I'm sure that fans of ReZero and Edge of Tomorrow will have something to enjoy Ooh, here. That looks fun. I love mysteries. I'm excited for that one. Past Tokyo Bay stands a special sector, Far East Special District, more commonly known as 24th Ward. Their three childhood friends grew up together in spite of their differences, but their relationship changes in the wake of an incident. A year later, their phones all ring simultaneously. It's a call from a longtime friend who supposedly died, and the phone call leaves them with one instruction. Choose the future. Reunited under a new mission, the three seek to protect the 24th Ward and all they hold dear, but will they be able to overcome their differences and save everyone? Original anime from Cloverworks, here we go. Is it just me, or oh, does Tokyo original. 24th Ward somehow give off Anohana vibes? That or Wonder Egg priority. However, this time I can see this turning into more of an action thriller that could be a sleeper hit of the season. January just can't come soon enough. At number 7 we have Ooh, Requiem we of Rose King. Okay, so the thing about original anime that I have to like mention is that original anime always, these the ones that I've seen, they always start out, at least from Crunchyroll. Let's just be specific. The ones that I've seen are specifically from Crunchyroll. Um, um, but they always start out so good and then the end is just so bad. I don't know why it always it always ends up that way with original anime like um Fena, um uh, the pirate princess, Fena, Fiena, Fiena, whatever, the pirate princess. That one I thought that was really good up until the ending where I felt like it didn't make any sense. Like I feel like they rushed at the ending. For whatever reason. And it just didn't make any sense to me at all. And it just felt super unnecessary. Honestly, I don't know why they didn't, they didn't just I don't know, I feel like some original anime with Crunchyroll is like a one and done type of deal. Like they do one season and they're kind of like, yep, that's it, we're done. I feel like with Fena, they could have like, it could have been so good as just like a, like a one piece type show. Like where they just like, they're pirate explorations and they just explore different parts of the world. Is what it was like kind of boiling I feel like, like it was kind of the vibe, but at the same time, it felt more like a. They're really more focused on like a huge plot line, because I feel like with without like the huge plot line that I feel like was solved at like the very end of the show, like there's no room for any more, like episodes, any anything else, like they literally like solved the whole entire point of the plot in a single season, a single 12 episode season, which doesn't make any sense to me. I don't, I don't know what's up with original anime. Like it's the same thing with God of High School. God of High School ending was rushed too. Like I just don't understand why they rush these endings for these anime. There's, they start so good and then just flop. I don't understand why, like they're just so bad with pacing with original anime. They're so bad with pacing. I, I just, I, I don't know why they're so bad with pacing. I mean, I guess that's why, like, you, with, you, they, you, when people make anime, they really follow the source material. Like, the source material is, like, they're really pretty good with pacing when they're following the source material, but I feel like when they're making their own stuff, pacing gets really bad for some reason. I don't know. Weird. Historical drama never goes out of flavor, especially something with such a dark and noir atmosphere like this. Requiem of Rose King is a series loosely based on Shakespearean works Henry VI and Richard III. Born a cursed noble, Richard grapples against self-identity. Possessing both male and female characteristics, he immediately finds himself the object of scorn. Despite being loved by his father, the complete opposite can be said of his mother, leading him to a childhood of hatred. As he grows up, Richard starts to believe that he That's can sad. find salvation by leading his father to the throne. 
However, enemies lie in wait, featuring no less than Jeanne d'Arc herself. With the War of Roses in full swing, will Richard bring his family to glory, or will he drag it down the depths of the abyss? As Vanitas has shown us so far, dark fantasy will always have its fair share of fans. For those who are into classic literature or just enjoy dramatic shows with some supernatural drama written all over it, then this is something worth looking out for. Barao no Sorets. That looks interesting. I like it. I clearly remember back then, people were saying things like, if you haven't read Uzumaki, you haven't experienced Japanese horror yet. Now, while I wonder if such claims oh, could still be justified now, almost a decade after that hype, Biden. one thing is for sure. Uzumaki is one of the most notable horror manga I've ever read, and it's very due <gasps> for an anime adaptation. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Wait, 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 wait. This is my thumbnail, by the way. This is my thumbnail. This is my thumbnail, guys. Guys, guys. What are the odds? What are the odds? I got this a hot topic. I saw it. I, I didn't know the lore behind it. I saw it. I thought it looked cool. And I got it. Now I know the lore. Now I know the lore behind the shirt. I've gotten compliments on that shirt too. What are the odds? What are the odds? Wait, I have to. What's the name again? One that will be one of the most. Now, almost a haven't experienced. I clearly. What's the name? I Uzumaki? clearly remember back then, people were saying things like, if you haven't read Uzumaki, you haven't Uzumaki. experienced the hype, and it's Uzumaki. very due for an anime adaptation, Uzumaki. one that we'll be getting in the fall Uzumaki. of 2022. The premise is simple, actually. It's a story about bizarre events involving spirals, and one that, as expected, slowly escalates. An obsession with the shape is but the prelude to an entire town spiral into madness. Having experienced the story in manga form, I think that one of the biggest selling points for Uzumaki is the art. Junji Ito is a master of horror, and it clearly shows with how disturbing and spine-chilling the illustrations are. With a relatively short story compared to the typical manga series and a confirmed episode count of just four, Uzumaki looks to be one of those short but powerful types of anime. I'm expecting theatrical quality that more than amplifies the horrors that Junji Ito's mind is capable of creating. I'm excited. I'm excited. That's awesome. I can't believe I have that shirt. What are the chances? This is very beautiful. Wow. This is very beautiful. I'm looking for it. At that time, I Up next, we have... Bubble? Yep, that's the title, Bubble. It's an original anime project that's set to premiere on Netflix, original but anime? first things first. When was the last oh, time no. you saw an anime oh, project yeah, generate yeah. so I much do, hype heard of this doing anime. so little? Well, it's not blowing up the internet viral, but the moment the trailer hit, I've seen some excited chattering related to Bubble. Then again, who can blame them? Urobuchi, Sawano, and Araki all involved. That's quite the all-star lineup you've got there, bringing together some of the people involved in beloved anime masterpieces like Attack on Titan, Psycho Pass, Fate <gasps> Zero, and more. And it's I by Wit to boot. Psycho there is a lot. Psycho Pass. I love Psycho Pass. I love Psycho Pass. Sorry, sorry. I love Psycho Pass. To be excited <laughs> about the parkour scene looks nothing short of awesome, and it seems that this is a movie that will bring the feels. Certainly a welcome addition to 2022's oh, anime lineup. Oh, it's a movie. Can you hear me? Fourth is Hell's Paradise. For someone who's tired of this world, all oh, of the killing and betrayal, what greater curse could there be than immortality? Betrayed ninja Gabimaru the Hollow thought he'd accepted his fate, yet death refuses to take a hold of him, owning to his subconscious desire to live and return to his wife. In exchange, executioner Asaimon comes to the ninja with a proposal. To gain pardon, he's to join an expedition to an island south of Japan. The mythical elixir of life is said to be on that island, and it's the key to the ninja's freedom. However, dangers mm. far 
greater than any man have seen lurk on that island. Will Gabumaru and his ragtag crew of criminals survive and grasp freedom? The premise is quite interesting, and I found myself picking the manga up and reading quite a bit of it. What I like the most about this story is that it's not just a simple good and evil type of action story. It goes beyond that with characters that may not be as bad as their reputations say. Come in for the action and adventure, get amazed by the good characterization. Sums up my yeah, experience reading it, so I can't wait to see it get animated. Okay, now In I third know place, we about. have Blue Lock. It's about time we got another Orcs. one of those gritty sports anime, mm. and Blue Lock's there to fill that void. The titular Blue Lock's a prison like facility built with a sole purpose to find Japan's next national team striker. From a pool of hundreds of participants, only one will get chosen and the rest get banned from joining the team forever. One of the prospects wow. is Yoichi, a striker dealing with doubts, further pushed by an unselfish play costing his team the Nationals. Seeing the Blue Lock project as an opportunity to clear his mind, he enters the facility with the goal of grabbing hold of glory as the star of the national team. Blue Lock takes the friendship and teamwork themes of typical sports anime and turns those conventions upside down. Oh, and their superpowers too. Reality just doesn't work that way. So the series instead delves on a more cynical take, going with the themes of ego and selfishness. Certainly a different take from what we used to see. And while I don't automatically equate cynical and dark to good, the series has a lot to keep you entertained. The characters end up being interesting and hard to predict, and it's up to you to decide how you look at them considering their circumstances. You rarely see psychological and sports combined as a genre, but if you want to see one done beautifully, then Blue Lock is your pick. What is it? Our second most anticipated like anime this 2022 is Spy yeah, Family. Yeah, we saw that. Yeah, we saw that. How could I have forgotten about this before? Even before it became an anime, Spy Family is a perennial favorite. I've seen a lot of people talk about it, so imagine the collective shouts of joy when an anime was finally announced. For the sake of world peace, there's no hurdle Twilight won't take. However, that statement just had to be put to the test with his latest assignment. You see, to investigate the politician Donovan Desmond, he gets tasked with infiltrating said son's school. But how does one do that? Easy. Get married, have a child, and play family. Twilight, now <laughs> taking the alias Lloyd Forger, quickly adapts his family, but it turns out that the rest of his adapted family have their own hidden natures. A secret agent, an assassin, and a kid who can read minds. What happens when they come together, working towards their agendas while pretending to be an ordinary loving family? Now, this is a comedy it's crazy I can get he just I love how it intertwines like action with comedy an thanks to the absurd a setup and telepath. scenarios that can quickly turn into thrilling sequences. If you enjoy those Mr. and Mrs. Smith type stories, this could be the anime for you. It's also got a slew of wholesome and relatable moments for an adult man like me, so that's always a bonus. Coming out on top is Chainsaw Man. Yeah, all these already saw. I literally just finished watching the trailer. Now, was this a surprise? Everyone just can't get enough of Chainsaw Man, and its announcement is probably well, one of the major events this past few months. Like, People went wild trailer, for this upcoming show, show and as early as now, I'm trailer, calling this the mainstream still. hit of its season. Now, for the uninitiated, here's what it's all about. Chainsaw Man stars Denji. Having outlived his usefulness, he finds himself betrayed and slain by the same devils who are in cahoots with the Yakuza. Fusing with his pet devil, he gets reincarnated as the titular Chainsaw Man, swearing revenge on those who betrayed him. He joins the Public Safety Bureau as one of the hunters. Bloody, brutal, chaotic. That sums uh -huh. up Chainsaw Man. It's also extremely dark in comparison to most Shonen Jump titles, and it will surely be a great addition to its list of more cynical series like Death Note and the mentioned Summertime Render. However, talking about it just doesn't do it justice, so make sure that you watch it when it comes out. Uh -huh. So, how about you? What's your most anticipated new anime of 2022? Tell everyone in the comments section. Bro, I need a synopsis for the synopsis for that. Synopsis. <laughs> I do not understand what I want. I don't, I don't understand. Um, but yeah. Chainsaw Man looks really interesting. I just, like, it reminds me of, um, the art style reminds me of Jujutsu no Kaisen. Um, it has similar art style, so at least, I don't know if there's any correlation to that, but to me it just looks like it looks very similar. But it looks it looks really good. It looks really good. I'm excited for that. Um that this anime this season, they're going hard this season. 
hope they're not being overworked. Like I said, I hope they're like they probably are being overworked, but like you know, I hope they're you know, I I hope they're not overworking themselves. Honestly, um, um, I do appreciate all the new anime coming out, but the health of the workers also matter more than me getting anime or anybody getting anime. You know what I'm saying? But I am. I really pre I do appreciate all the incredible effort that they're putting into this. The artwork it is amazing. It's absolutely beautiful, and I'm I'm excited to watch it. Um, so yes, thank you so much for the animators, the workers behind all of this, and thank you for this video of putting this together. Uh, who is this? Oh, Vin Vinny Tube, Vin Tube, which I've seen I've react to uh, a lot of their videos before. So. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys are most into, what new anime series you guys are most anticipated for. Is it any of these? Is it new ones? Let me know. I need a new anime to watch, so let me know what you guys are looking at, what you guys are paying attention to, what's on your anime tracker. Let me know. Um, and that's gonna be it for today's video. Um, if you enjoyed, like and subscribe, and follow me on all my social to see more of my face. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.